Terry G. Thanks a lot for stopping by and watching my video. If you could take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? I'd really appreciate it. Again, thanks a lot for stopping by. Man, oh man, it is ever hot here. It's about 33 Celsius or about 85 to 90 Fahrenheit and it is humid. I'm up at my cottage and I'm sweating bullets. Woo! So that's not what this video is about though. I just like to fill you in on some of the things that I'm experiencing right at this moment. What this video is about, this video is about sabotaging your sobriety. And I'm not talking about if you do these things, you're gonna go out and drink and you know life is gonna get pretty crummy. But they may affect your sobriety in a negative way. And if you continue to do it, you may wanna go out and have a drink, pick up that first drink. So these are just things that are very general. I do them still, so you know this is not for somebody who has one day of sobriety or 30 years of sobriety. I think we all do this and whatever your number of years of sobriety is. So just keep an eye on these things, be aware of these things. And I tell you right now, if you listen to this video and you keep an eye on the things that I'm pointing out, your sobriety, your quality of sobriety will improve, guarantee it. The first one is isolation. Even for myself, when my relationship's going bad, I feel really stressed, I'm angry, I'm tired, you know, things aren't going that well in my life, I tend to want to isolate. Like I intentionally go out of my way to stay by myself. So isolation is a big beware factor when it comes to recovery. It really is. People in recovery from alcoholism or drug addiction tend to want to isolate when things are not going great for them in their recovery. So if you find yourself isolating, wanting to stay by yourself, staying in your head, it's time to take an action and reach out, go to a meeting, whatever it is, but get out of that basement or get out of that room or whatever you're doing and tell somebody about it. So beware of isolation. It's a really big trigger for sabotaging your sobriety. Another one is, is thinking you can do it on your own. I know for myself in early recovery, I thought I could just quit drinking and do life by myself without any help. Well, that is a big sabotage too. I went back out drinking because of that attitude. I went back out drinking because I didn't ask anybody for help. I just went to meetings, sat there by myself, somewhat stayed like an island just by myself and then reach out and tell people what was going on with me or ask for help. So thinking I can do recovery one day at a time by myself. Another thing that could sabotage your recovery for sure is balling up those emotions. Blah! Staying angry, staying hurt, having fear, all resentments, all those negative emotions, balling up your emotions, thinking that you can suppress them and they'll go away. When we sober up, we have to deal with our emotions. We have to express our emotions. We need to do that. And the more we ball it up, the more stress we cause, the more, more, more uneasiness we will cause within us, emotionally, mentally, we'll feel stressed out because these emotions are energy and they'll bottle us, they'll bog us down and we'll need to get relief. So if you're feeling very emotional, and you think stuffing your emotions down is gonna be good for you, it's not good for you. Find somebody that you can trust and tell them or tell her how you feel about yourself and the world around you. I just gotta look at my paperwork here. And one that used to really get me for many, many years, and I mentioned this in other videos, is victim mode or self-pity. Those two things for myself go together that's why i talk to them in this video as one because victim mode and self-pity big ones for me i relapsed twice because of that feeling super bad for myself feeling like a victim feeling a lot of self-pity you know it only happens to me why am i an alcoholic why are my kids not talking to me i'm silver i'm doing the best i can can't they see that I'm doing the best I can. My boss is on my case. I'm getting up, I'm trying to do everything I can. 
that self-pity, that victim mode, the world is against us, is a great way to sabotage your sobriety. I drank over those, two reasons basically. I put them together like I said, but I drank over those. I relapsed on feeling like a victim, self-pity. It wore me down over the months and I went back out after 14 months of continuous, of sort of quasi sobriety. So there is things in our daily life that we can watch for. And one of them is feeling like a victim or self-pity. I put that in one example, but it's kind of like two, but you know what I'm talking about anyways. Just be aware of those things. Another one that I used to do in early recovery, and I stopped doing it, but it took a lot of work, is being a yes man. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. Being a people pleaser, an ass kisser, whatever you want to call it. But learn to say no once in a while. No, I don't want to do the reading tonight at the meeting. I'll just sit here and relax and have a coffee and share my experience, strength and hope with somebody or just listen tonight. No, I can't go over tonight or you can learn the word, learn to say the word no and quit being a people pleaser. It is impossible for us to be everything to everybody. And a lot of us in sobriety get caught up in that, especially early recovery. We have low self-worth, we have a lot of guilt and shame we're carrying with us. And we think if we just become Mr. or Mrs. Agreeable to everybody, people will begin to like us is a really destructive way or a super way of sabotaging our sobriety. There is no way we can be everything to everybody. So if you find yourself being pulled in all these directions from people that maybe in recovery meetings, maybe your kids, your wife, or your husband, or your workplace, just prioritize what's going on and chop off some of those things to give yourself some me time, some time to relax, some time to be by yourself. So being a people pleaser or Mr. or Mrs. Agreeable is totally, totally the wrong way of doing it. It's a learned behavior. We sort of learn it because we don't uh, feel good about ourselves or something like that. I know that's why the reason I was doing it because I didn't really feel good about myself. So I thought if I sort of went out of my way for everybody, I could win some friends or, you know, get my boss to like me a little bit more. But it wore me down, it made me miserable, and it sabotaged my sobriety. I didn't drink over it, but I felt really bad about things. To my sponsor in my recovery program, I said, Terry, quit doing that. Just be by yourself for a little while and look after yourself. And I did that. I took his words, you know, as gospel, and I did exactly that. I stopped being this yes person, and I turned to a little bit of a no person. No is a full statement and no means no. It feels a little awkward at the beginning, but you will get used to it, believe me. Looking after ourselves is a really key thing to do in our sobriety. And the last one I wanna to talk to you about is we withdraw from recovery. We don't talk to our sponsor as much, or we don't go to meetings. We, we, we withdraw from meetings, we withdraw from like-minded people, the recovery circle, we start maybe feeling a little better. Maybe our wife comes back, maybe our girlfriend comes back, our partner comes back, whoever comes back, and we start feeling better, you know? Work's getting better, the boss is off my case, you know, the court charges got let go, you know, we're not being charged anymore. We're back in the house. Things just seem to be overall going better, so we stop going to meetings, we stop associating with people in the program, and that's another huge, Thing that goes against our sobriety. Win, lose, or draw, or things are going great in our lives, things are going very well in our lives, things are going crummy, things are going real bad in our lives, or things are just going okay in our lives. We always need to go to meetings and we always need to stay connected to recovery. Like-minded people, no matter what is going on in our lives, always stay connected to recovery meetings, to your home group. Never give up, never give in, and always attend. And if you feel good that night at your recovery meeting, maybe you need to help out and give a little bit back. But withdrawing from recovery 
your recovery program is a huge, huge sign that you think you have it made and you don't need recovery anymore and you'll slowly revert back to the old way, to the old Terry G. Maybe I'll go back out and drink again or maybe I'll just slowly go nuts and insane because without the booze, I found it very hard to cope with life. Without a program, I found it very hard to cope with life too, one day at a time. Don't give up, the miracle is just around the corner, okay? My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we're learning to live sober one day at a time. If you like my video, leave a comment below. If you don't like my video, leave a comment below. But can you all do me one favor? Can you please subscribe to my channel? I'd really appreciate it. Don't give up, stay safe, stay sober, God bless, bless, peace out, and I'll see you next week. And thanks a lot for stopping by. Thank you very much, bye-bye. <music>